On September 8, 2008, Deanna Coleman walked into the U.S. Attorney's Office in St. Paul and struck a deal in exchange for her help in taking down what was at the time the biggest fraud in U.S. history. And soon she will find out just how much her help was worth. She was the model cooperating witness for government in the case of this magnitude. Just hours after signing this plea agreement, Deanna Coleman began secretly recording conversations with her longtime boss, Tom Petters. You know, this is one big fraud, and that's what it is. Tapes that became the key evidence that sent Petters to prison for 50 years. Compare that to the sense that Tom Petters got. She's already getting a large amount of leniency simply by virtue of the fact that she cooperated and reached a favorable plea agreement with the government that caps her exposure. Donald Lewis is the dean of Hamlin Law School. The former trial lawyer says Coleman was the central figure in the government's case. For her part in exposing Petter's $3.5 billion Ponzi scheme, Coleman pled guilty to a single count of conspiracy to commit fraud. She faces five years in prison but could be released on parole. Ultimately, it will be up to the judge to decide if her sentence will be reduced. Albeit she had a, a, a very major role in uh, perpetrating the fraud, she also had a much more major role in uncovering it. Hired as a temp, Deanna Coleman would soon become part of Tom Petter's inner circle, what he called his dream team. Tom, uh, two other guys and myself, and that was it. Hers was a life few could even dream of, a big house, luxury cars, and million dollar bonuses. But Coleman's rags to riches story has brought her back to her humble beginnings. For the last year, she has been working in this modest office in South Minneapolis. She still drives to work in this white Lexus, the same vehicle seen here inside the garage of her $1.2 million Plymouth home. But soon, that will all disappear. As part of her cooperation agreement, all of Coleman's assets will be turned over to a receiver. And despite her important role in defrauding investors, Lewis says there is a lesson here for all white-collar criminals. I think a probationary sentence for someone in Deanna Coleman's role, who was in a supportive role, would actually send a positive message to individuals on the inside that they should, they should do all they can to reveal fraudulent activity and be in the first in the door uh, in revealing that to the, to the government authorities. Coleman's co-defendants have yet to be sentenced, and even though they pleaded guilty to their role and testified at trial, none had cooperating agreements with prosecutors, and it's unlikely they'll get the same preferential treatment at sentencing. Bill Keller, Fox 9 News. Guilty on all counts. In just the last hour, jurors in the Tom Petters fraud trial have come back with a verdict. The seven-woman, five-man jury got the 20-count indictment case last week. And we're going to go live right now to St. Paul, where some of the important players, including the attorneys involved, are speaking to the media. Uh, for their own use and benefit. Now, those are the end of my remarks. And at this time, we will open it for any questions that you may have of the... Uh, prosecution investigation team. Were you, were you surprised at how long it took? I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Dixon and Mr. Wright here for their remarks. Can you come close to the mic? Please? Yeah, sure. Hi. Um, question was, uh, were we surprised at how long it, t it took? Uh, no, I wouldn't say we were surprised. It was a lot of evidence. Uh, it was a lengthy trial, three and a half weeks, with a lot packed into it. Uh, and I believe that the jurors probably went through the evidence very, very carefully, uh, looking at all the recordings, all the documents, uh, and considering all the testimony. And really what it is is a testament to the hard work of the law enforcement agents who gathered all the evidence in this case. I've never been so proud as to work with the folks right here from the FBI, the IRS, and the postal inspectors who put together a tremendous case a tremendous amount of evidence that made the decision in the case inevitable uh, after some hard work by 12 uh, conscientious jurors. Can you comment on Diana Coleman and the role she played and how, how perhaps the government depended on her? Would the government ever been made aware of this if it wasn't truly for Diana Coleman? Uh, clearly, she was the one that started the investigation on September 8, 2008. Uh, ultimately, would the, would the scheme have come to light? Uh, probably, but we would not have been able to act as quickly as we did. We would not have been able to investigate with the full scope and force that we have here. We would not have necessarily been able to bring everyone to justice as we are trying to do. So she was a critical component. Do you believe Mr. Petters would have left the country before you got to him if it was not for Deanna Coleman? 
clearly we thought that he was a flight risk which is why we sought his detention last october could somebody tell it help us with sentencing from what to what is it possible that the judge might do after the present investigation what's what's out there for him as a as a, a range all, all i can say is uh, that his statutory maximum sentence is 350 years uh, based on the 20 counts of conviction the sentencing guidelines will be determined after the probation office does a pre-sentence report, uh, and we expect the guidelines to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 360 months to life. And, and what about the sentencing for those that pled guilty but uh, testified for the prosecution? What, what's, it, what's, it, what's, what's ahead for that? That's a harder to say. Um, we expect sentencing to occur within the next few months. That's typical in a federal case. Obviously, this is a, a large case involving numerous victims. Uh, victim impact statements need to go out. A lot of work needs to be done before sentencing, along with the forfeiture proceedings, which still need to occur before Judge Kyle. The foreperson told us that she thought that uh, Petters may have been a decent guy who just got caught up in a, in a bad situation. What's your view of Petters as a, as a guy? I'm not going to comment on uh, Mr. Petters as, as an individual. Uh, the evidence that we put together demonstrated his orchestration of a $3.5 billion fraud scheme. Uh, that's the loss. Uh, we try people based on their offenses, the, the crimes that they commit, and not the people that they might be. Uh, people are free, free to judge who he was as a person as they might, but what the jury found is that he was guilty of the crimes with which he was charged. How, how, what impact the audio tapes were in your case? Well, what do you, Tim? Audio tapes. Audio tapes. How helpful were they? Please right. step up, sir. The audio tapes gave, uh, 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 the jury gave everyone who was listening to the case an uh, uh, inside understanding of what was going on between the people who were involved in the conspiracy. I think they were extremely helpful to the prosecution and extremely helpful for the jury in understanding Mr. Petter's role and some of the other people's role in the offense. Was it uh, a concern about how complicated some of the details were of this case and uh, following the money, that sort of thing? Uh, we did our best in uh, in trying the case to, to make it as simple as possible. The testimony of the of the agents who testified in the case that were putting together the exhibits uh, did our best to, to make it more understandable. Uh, but obviously, the, the jury went through everything. They, they took their time. They did their job. They did the hard work that was required to, to get through it. And they found that uh, the evidence showed that Mr. Petters was guilty. Do you make a recommendation on sentence for Mr. Petters? Yeah, we file a position pleading in every case, uh, and we will file a position pleading in this case as well. That obviously needs to be considered uh, after uh, consideration of the pre-sentence report. But can you, can you give us what you a ballpark of what you might be asking for? Uh, not really at this time. What we will we obviously consider this to be the most significant financial fraud to ever occur in the state of Minnesota, and I anticipate seeking a sentence that is commensurate with with that offense. Mr. Can you comment on the ability to cross-examine Mr. Petters and what that did for the government? Because yeah. you have him on the stand and were able to cross-examine. Well, it's always uh, an interesting opportunity to cross-examine a defendant uh, regarding his offense, uh, to ask questions, to test his uh, propositions and his assertions to the jury. And I think the jury was able to uh, conclude that his testimony was false. Mr. Dixon, what do you anticipate the net gain will be in terms of the amount of money uh, recovered from his assets that will go towards paying back some of the investors? The prosecutors meeting before the media and outlining their